stage and add Stefan. Hi, Stefan. How are you? Hi, Jorge. I'm fine. Thank you. How are you? Fine. Thank you. We are live, but we will start your presentation in about uh, two minutes. But I think you have everything almost ready. Uh, I think so, I have started to share the screen. I'm not sure if you are aware yes, of that. It's yeah. here. Yeah. Yes, Great. it is here and it is ready. And within one minute and a half, we'll go live and start your presentation, but we'll uh, keep the schedule. So it will be easier to cut the videos based on time because the, the people that will cut the videos will not know <laughs> much about tilings and so on. So it's, it's better to have the all presentations at the right time. Mm -hmm. So are you in Austria or something like that, right? Uh, yes. In Austria. Um, in, in my home now, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's close to Vienna. Oh, close to Vienna? Okay. Mm -hmm. But still working remotely or? Yes, uh, a couple of months ago, we decided to be remote first. So not many people go to the office nowadays, <laughs> uh, in, in our company at least. <laughs> For us, uh, working in technology is really nice. We can stay with uh, our family and not wasting time traveling and commuting yeah, exactly. every day. Are you working remotely? So, yes, yes. Since one year and a half, I'm very happy <laughs> to stay at home. So, Seven, everything is ready. I will give the floor to you. So, have a nice presentation. Thank you. Okay. So um, welcome to my presentation and um, thank you for uh, having me. Um, I will talk about embracing FOSS for vector tile pipelines in 2021, the two case studies. Uh, my name is Stefan Brand. Um, I work for a Austrian based company called EOX and I will give a short sneak peek about UX about a year ago. So about a year ago, um, we thought, okay, we should add vector tiles to our technology stack. Um, and uh, we had already two use cases, which I will talk about later. In my presentation, first of all, I will give a little bit more of an introdu introduction. Um, then I will present our two um, use cases and for each of them, uh, I will show you our requirements that we had before starting the projects. Uh, also, I will show you the results in action and um, I will um, also go into a bit of a detail into the technologies that we are using in these projects now. And to sum up, I will uh, share our lessons learned and also um, my conclusion. So, um, EOX, the company where I'm working, is um, a small company of about 17 uh, um, EOX experts. <laughs> That's how we call we call them. Um, in fact, I learned that today um, the, another another coworker joined, and uh, she will be our 18th <laughs> coworker. We are mainly concerned with with the processing of satellite data, and um, some time ago we also decided to go into the agricultural domain um, and work on projects for the uh, European Commission's common agricultural policy. Um, at about two, uh, more than two years ago in summer 2019, we started a project called ELPVIS, which is short for Land Parcel Visualizer. And this was in fact my internship project back then. And my task was to create a web app um, that would show all the agricultural parcels of Austria in a performant way in the browser. Um, back then we would uh, have a shape file of all agricultural parcels. We would pre-render them to, uh, to, to vector tiles using typical no, and we would store the vector tiles in uh, a directory on cloud storage. And uh, in the web browser, we would use leaflet and an extension called leaflet.vectorgrid to visualize the parcels uh, in leaflet. Um, the client would also have other capabilities, for example, 
uh, lens to peek through the ground truth or an attributes table and an overview map. Um, you can find the source code on, on GitHub if you're interested. So now on to our two use cases. A year ago, in autumn 2020, um, we had two projects in mind. One was the on-the-fly rendering of millions of agricultural parcels. So in fact, the evolution of Elpvis that I showed you earlier. Uh, secondly, um, we had the task to create a new EUX maps overlay. EUX maps is our line of base maps and satellite maps. And um, for our customer, we would need the web mercator projection and also the geodetic reference system. So um, we started a research project into vector tiles and uh, which technologies are out there. And uh, I was the captain of this uh, little research team. Um, I, I came up with this um, with these sections that you can see on this slide. Um, so we had one source um, for uh, the OpenStreetMap import, uh, the planet um, files. And we also wanted to store arbitrary input geometries as vector tiles, for example, agricultural parcels. Then the question was, how would we generate the vector tiles? Which technologies would we use nowadays? Um, then um, we would also have to find out how to render them into both vector tiles and also into raster tiles for clients that do not uh, have support for vector tiles yet. And finally, um, we wanted to use the same style documents for both client-side rendering and also server-side rendering. Initially, I did some research into where to store the data to be able to generate vector tiles from them. And it quickly came out that um, we would be using PostGIS. And so I set up a little test instance with the agricultural parcels of Wallonia in Belgium and I tested some open source tile servers that were available back then. Um, so I tested Dirt, Tegula, PostTile, Martin and PG TileServe. And um, I was very convinced of Martin, but it seemed that the um, latest release was already uh, some while ago and that it was not actively maintained. Um, and then I found out about PG TileServe, which has more or less the same features as Martin. And um, one of the main contributors is Paul Ramsey, who is also core contributor of PostGIS. So we thought, okay, for the initial testing and research, we would go for PG TileServe and set up a test instance with our agricultural parcels from Austria. So this looked like uh, you can see in these two screenshots. One cool advantage of PG TileServe is that it automatically detects all the tables that are in your database and creates preview maps for them. And you also have the option to uh, generate function layers, which are SQL functions uh, stored in the database. And then um, you have a preview map already built in in PG TileServe. And on the right side of the screenshot, you can see how this looks. It's of course not styled in any way, but it previews what data you have in your database table. Um, I really recommend this for beginners and for people who just want to have a look at their data in the database and uh, serve them. Um, so, but for our use cases, we needed a bit of more flexibility and we also wanted to use um, Python APIs because that's um, um, the, like uh, most, most of, our, of, of my colleagues use Python in their daily work. Um, our first um, case study the on-the-fly rendering of millions of parcels in the um, web browser. So we had three requirements. So we didn't want to pre-render and store the, the vector tiles as pre-rendered vector tiles in an object storage like we did before with the uh, uh, land partial visualizer. But we wanted to directly pull the data from the, from the um, database and generate the vector tiles on the fly. Then one requirement was to have a dynamic set of attributes so that one operator, for example, would have um, a, a front end with one set of attributes and then another operator would have a different set of attributes and both would use the same data source. The third um, requirement was that we could use interactive styling from the front end. So in the front end web application, um, we're now able to um, change the layer 
and differently style the vector tiles based on the selected layer. And the data in the browser is always the same. We only pull the vector tiles once. Um, I will now show you how this looks in action. So on the left side, you have the vector tiles um, colored by the declared crop type. And on the right side, you see that we have applied a filter on one crop type and all the other vector tiles are still there. So the geometries are still in the browser, but they're not shown anymore. So that's what I mean by uh, dynamic styling in the web browser. I will now go into detail about the technologies that we're using. Uh, for the backend, we are using Django and in particular the uh, extension Django Vector Tiles by Jean-Etienne Castanier. Um, it, it allows us to um, leverage the STSMVT function of PostGIS from Django. And for the front end, we are using uh, our own EUX elements, which is a repository that you can find on GitHub for geospatial view components. Um, it um, uses view layers, which is the uh, view, view adaption of open layers for the, for the view framework. Um, if you're interested, you can even um, use the EUX elements for your own projects. You can find the source code on GitHub. Um, I want to um, show a bit how the endpoint looks like in code that receives a request for vector tiles and then serves the vector tiles directly from the database. Um, we have different data sets in the database that are um, all that they have their own um, reference dates. So we would first receive a, a year, a month, and a day in the path, which would filter the, the, all the agricultural parcels by the reference date. And then we pass the zoom level and the column and the row x, y. And that would uh, give us the agricultural parcels of one tile. And you can see that there is not much code involved. Most of it is handled by the Django Vector Tiles uh, extension. Now on to our second case study. Um, the second use case was the EOX maps overlay for both Web Mercator and Geodetic. And in fact, we ended up with eight different layers because in, in total there are eight combinations because we had the requirement of the same style document for both the vector um, tiles and the raster tiles. So we would also render raster tiles for clients that do not uh, understand vector tiles yet. Uh, then we would have the same data source for both projections and, and reference systems that we wanted to generate. And lastly, we needed uh, a light and a dark style to use also for um, bright, for, for light base maps and for satellite base maps. The next slide shows what I mean with this. So we have our uh, EOX cloudless satellite base map and uh, we are using the bright overlay layer here with the bright labels so that you can read it better on a satellite map. And you can see that it's generated recently because it already has uh, North Macedonia in it, which was only renamed in February 2019. Uh, I will now go into detail about the technologies again um, for this case study. So the data source is OpenStreetMap and uh, Natural Earth. We're filtering the OpenStreetMap data and we um, combine these two data sets in a post-GIS table uh, database. Um, we had to come up with our own um, little app that translates the post-GIS post um, SQL queries to TileServerGL. We are using TileServerGL to render the raster tiles, um, but the problem was that it only knows how to handle web mercator tiles. But we also needed the geodetic tiles, so um, we had to kind of teach um, TileServerGL how to use the um, geodetic uh, tile pyramid. I will show you how, what, it, what I mean by this on the next slide. Um, we used Fast API to um, build a little app that does all the translation um, and, and the requests to PostJS and uh, communicates with TileServerGL. And it also exposes an OGC compliant WMS endpoint, um, which is not provided by TileServerGL. 
Um, and from the from the WMS endpoint, we plugged in map cache to um, uh, have a cache for the vector tiles and the raster tiles. Um, now I will show you what I meant with that we taught TileServerGL how to use um, geodetic tiling pyramids. Um, it's a small hack, so to say. Um, the um, the our like the the geodetic tile pyramid has two tiles on the zoom level zero uh, level, the western hemisphere and the eastern hemisphere. But Web Mercator would only have one tile on the um, zoom level zero, and uh, four tiles on the zoom level one. So what our little app does, it translates the zoom levels back and forth. So that we could trick TileServerGL to think that it would render web mercator tiles, but in fact it's outputting our geodetic um, uh, vector tiles. Now the translation is done by the uh, app that uh, we call it with Fast API. So um, I will uh, shortly come to an end. Um, our lessons learned. Uh, for once. Uh, we discovered that the Mapbox style JSON, which is the default style document for vector tiles, works very well for static maps, like we use them for the EUX maps overlay, but it quickly becomes inefficient um, for uh, interactive styling um, in a front end web application, like we do for the agricultural parcels. So we resulted in using the built-in styling capabilities of open layers for dynamic styling in the web browser. Um, secondly, there is one issue with Django that it cannot um, completely model the STS-MVD function of PostGIS. It comes very close, but um, for the last few um, modelings in the object-related uh, mapping module of Django, um, um, it, it does not preserve the attribute names of the vector tiles, geometries. So um, there can be, of course, a workaround to use a raw SQL string, and that is, in fact, what the Django vector tiles um, extension of uh, Shoetien Castanet uses. Um, but it's still unsolved how to completely model the STSMVD function uh, using Django. If you're interested, you can have a look at this Stack Overflow question that I linked there. Um, the, the slides are already uploaded to the event um, in the event schedule for later usage. And thirdly, um, we yeah we we run into the problem that uh, TileServer GL cannot um, understand any other projections than Web Mercator, so that's why we came up with the custom solution using Fast, Fast API to uh, translate the zoom levels back and forth. Now to my conclusion, the adoption of the STSMVT function of PostGIS by the FOSS community has led to the democratization of vector tile generation and distribution. Uh, thank you for attending this talk and for paying your attention. And I would be glad to answer any questions. Thank you very much, Stefan. I, I think your presentation was quite clear around these two use cases. And it seems like you are already an expert in, in tiles and serving tiles. Um, we have uh, uh, questions from, from the audience. Uh, uh, the first one is, uh, can you get a lean version of Django? Um, like the FT framework for that. Uh, can you uh, really... Me like a... could, could you repeat that, please? Yeah, it's it's uh, uh, it's related with uh, the usage of Django, and uh, or what you have to install in Django to have this uh, working. Mm -hmm. um, okay, I understand. The, um, the so Django setup to have mm -hmm. this. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, there is a Django vector tiles extension that you can find on GitHub. And you can install it from pip. So it's basically pip install. And um, then you have to set up this little code snippet that um, provides a view, which receives the vector tile requests and um, yeah, returns the vector tiles. 
most of it is already implemented in the uh, Django vector tiles extension. So you only need to change things if you want some custom processing before you um, respond with the vector tiles. Um, another question is, uh, uh, does fast API work only as a proxy and translation engine? Um, it, in fact, it uh, also does the SQL queries because we needed some uh, <laughs> more or less complicated uh, modifications and um, we would um, build the SQL query also using fast API and it would communicate with the tile server GL endpoints and it would also provide the WMS endpoint. Another question is related to the, uh, the styling performance and the question is what makes Mapbox uh, style inefficient? Um, the thing is that um, we would have to update uh, a JSON structure all the time if we want to apply a different style for uh, only when we switch the layers and also for um, highlights if we only want to highlight one parcel by clicking on it. Um, so uh, we found it more um, better for, for the logic of the, of the app and easier to, to, to code actually to use the built-in functionality of open layers there and not uh, fiddle with the JSON of Mapbox style JSON there. Okay. Um, uh, the, 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 the question is, can STSMVT, the post function, function, serve tiles of really large tables? Um, or you have to pre-render the, the vector tiles? Uh, not at all. Um, our, um, our production database, I think it has, so there are about 2.5 million parcels per month. And I think we have like six or seven data sets in there now. So it would be about 15 million geometries, 15 million rows there. And it's extremely performant. It uses the, um, the uh, geographical index um, in the database. So it only picks out the 100 or 1000 geometries that it needs for one tile. It's really performant. Um, another question is which software for map recommend for these vector tiles? Mm -hmm. Uh, for the front end, right? Yes, um, I suppose so. Yeah. Um, I have been working with both the uh, leaflet and also with open layers. And in open layers, the vector tiles functionality is built in, while with leaflet you need um, an extension. And I have an experience from two years ago, and back then the leaflet extension was not very actively maintained. And open layers has continuous improvements in this regard. So you can expect to have all the vector tiles functionality already built in, in your open layers instance. And um, yeah, it will be up to date for all the functionality that you need. Okay. So Stefan, I, I think you answered all the questions. Thank you very much for your presentation. Uh, and see you around. Thank you, thank you. Have a nice day. Bye-bye. Thank you very much. Bye. So here in this, in this room, in this Buenos Aires room, we don't have any presentation right now. We'll be back within uh, 35 minutes for the next presentation. I'll have the banner here. So uh, the, the next presentation will be this one called the Open Map Tiles, uh, Vector Tiles uh, for uh, OpenStreetMap by Thomas Pohanka. And we'll start in about uh, 35, 38 minutes or so. So you can go to another room or you can lunch or take your time. We'll be back soon here. Thank you for all.